Hello, uh, my name is Bahar Ibrahim, uh, and I'll be talking about a public lecture I attended earlier this semester. Um, so yep, earlier this semester I attended uh, Professor David Hughes' lecture on mammal urination. Um, it was interesting and a bit odd for me because uh, first of all he's speaking on mammal urination, which is always a little weird, um, and secondly because I had never heard of the IG Nobel Prize, so um, in both regards this lecture caught my attention um, and interest and piqued my interest. Uh, so. So, yep. so just to give you a background, the IG Nobel Prize um, honors achievements that make people laugh and uh, then think. Um, so it's intended to spur people's interest in science, medicine, and technology through humor, uh, which I thought was really a brilliant concept. Uh, so Professor Hugh um, introduced his lecture with a comedical antecedent about his daughter um, and explained a story about a previous graduate student that he had. Um, who actually did research for his PhD on eyelashes. Um, and so through that research, he eventually determined that eyelashes protect against evaporation. Um, so he kind of had that intro there. Um, and so then eventually Professor Hugh went on to talk about the IG Nobel Prize. Um, and uh, then eventually he uh, talked about the urination research that he had done. Um, and I guess just a note <clears throat> before I actually talk about the research, there are uh, misconceptions out there about uh, the bladder system. Uh, most people think it's just driven by bladder pressure um, and because of that uh, they do neglect um, the gravitational forces involved as well. Um, so yep, uh, so Professor Hugh, uh, just to give you some background on his research with urination, had a, a bunch of graduate students go to Zoo Atlanta to record and uh, study different mammals. There was 32 um, total that they collected data on. Um, so there was elephants, cows, rats, a bunch of different mammals. Uh, so then, <clears throat> uh, just in between that, just a side note, Professor Hugh talked about uh, how um, he had, uh, how his students had issues uh, trying to collect that data um, with, the, with the elephants not wanting to go on time. And so uh, there's a bit of humor there. So. Uh, good stuff. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, using uh, they took some high-speed video, video uh, videos uh, and basically like, slowed them down uh, so they could get flow rate measurements. Um, and eventually, through research with through data analysis of the videos, um, and they also looked into YouTube. So um, in combination with those two, uh, they eventually determined that uh, mammals over three kilograms in weight, empty their bladders um, in the co nearly constant duration of 21 seconds, plus or minus 13. Um, so pretty much they all go at the same time. Um, so it's pretty surprising to think that a uh, elephant could go at this, uh, could urinate in the same amount of time that a, a cat could. Um, so I guess to give you a comparison, an elephant is 3,600 times larger than a cat's an elephant has a bladder that's 3,600 times larger than a cat. Um, so that's 18 liters versus five milliliters. Um, and so they both uh, urinate in 20 seconds, about 20 seconds. Um, so yeah, all mammals um, bigger or weighing more than three kilograms urinate in the same span of time. Um, animals below that um, tend to have droplets, so their measurements uh, so in, in collecting that data, they found that, that, uh, that they, the mammals under um, three kilograms tend to be um, urinating in droplets, so it's hard to measure those. Um, so, so that's the reason for that data. Um, so then uh, Professor Hugh went on to display a graph of urination times. Um, so he showed 11 small animals, um, including bats, um, five rats, uh, some mice, and he went on to explain that there is a relationship between their body mass and uh, properties of their um, urinary system. Uh, uh, so there, it's a constant proportion to one another. Um, and then Professor Hugh then went on to explain the physics behind it. Um, and he discussed Bernoulli's law, Bernoulli's law uh, or Torricelli's law. Uh, he explained that like at the bottom of a pool, uh, you would have greater pressure. Um, so imagine holes at the, um, I guess, a urinary system at the bottom. There would be higher speeds, uh, just higher pressure at the bottom, so it would create faster speeds. Um, 
And so, for example, you would have end of elephant's urethra, which is one millimeter, or excuse me, one meter in length. Uh, so the pressure of fluid in it is the same as, um, say, a swimming pool. Uh, that's three feet deep. So then um, Professor Hugh went on to explain that it's possible that, uh, that this uh, feat is possible because larger animals have longer urethras. Uh, the weight of the fluid in the urethra is pushing the fluid out. Um, and because, ure the re uh, excuse me, because the urethra is long, flow rate is increased. Um, and then he also said that if uh, the urethra was shorter, um, an elephant, for example, um, would urinate for a longer time and uh, potentially be susceptible to predators. So that's why that doesn't occur. Um, and then another point to highlight uh, was that um, Professor Hugh uh, uh, brought up the urethra and the critical point of it. Um, so what it does is, uh, just to give you a better idea, um, it, it can be it can say, it basically provides a watertight pipe um, so you would so basically directs urine downward um, so the urethra increases uh, the force the gravitational force acting on the urine in the bladder um, and therefore the rate at which urine it comes out of your bladder um, it, that increases um, so the urethra is really critical to the bladder's ability to empty um, your system um, as quickly as possible um, and it's scaled based on your weight. Uh, so that concludes my lecture um, or my video on the lecture by Professor David Hugh. Uh, thank you for listening.